Hello and welcome to this video on the pros and cons of using regression analysis versus structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually discuss an analysis in the M plus software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video I want to discuss the pros and cons of using regression analysis versus structural equation modeling. This is a question that I frequently get as a statistical consultant where people ask whether uh, or ask about what the advantages are of using structural equation modeling or whether they could just simply use regression analysis with sum score. So what are the advantages? When would you really want to use structural equation modeling rather than standard multiple regression analysis? So, and for that, so say we have to ask ourselves what the main benefit is of using structural equation modeling or the main benefits. And so the first thing that comes to my mind is that with structural equation models, we can use measurement models and we can use latent variables that allow us to account for and also correct for measurement error in our analysis. And this has an advantage because in multiple regression analysis, we make the implicit assumption that our scores are measured without error, at least the ones on the independent or predictor variables. And this is, um, in many fields, this is rarely an assumption that is plausible or realistic because a lot of test scores, a lot of questionnaire scores and other measurements in the social sciences, for example, in psychology, do contain measurement error, or we could say they're not measured with perfect reliability. Reliabilities in psychology, for example, typically range between 0.7 and 0.9-ish roughly speaking for psychological tests and psychological scales which means they're not a hundred percent reliable and so when you have measures that are less than perfectly reliable and you use regression analysis that then then that can lead to bias in the estimated regression coefficients and it can also of course bias the standard errors that are associated with those regression coefficients which means that your statistical inference p-values, confidence intervals, etc. can also be compromised due to measurement error. And so that is the main thing that structural equation modeling with multiple indicators and latent variables addresses. By um, using latent variables, we can filter out measurement error. Measurement error can be separated from true score variance and the regression coefficients can then be estimated between latent variables which are not affected by measurement error and then if everything is properly specified, if you have a good measurement model, a well-fitting model, then in an ideal scenario your regression coefficients and their standard errors would be unbiased or at least wouldn't be biased by random measurement error effects. So that's one main benefit is that this issue of measurement error and unreliability in the scores can be addressed by structural equation modeling in regression analysis. We typically have to make the assumption that the scores are near perfect or perfectly reliable and that is something that we often cannot assume. So that's therefore I would say if you have measures that are not so reliable, that are not, too clo not close to perfectly reliable, then um, you should consider using structural equation modeling because then you can correct for error in your measurements. Another benefit of SEM is that it's, a more, it's more flexible in terms of the dependent variables. In regression analysis, multiple regression, we can only have one dependent variable at a time. There's also multivariate regression where you can have multiple outcome variables, but SEM is just generally more flexible because in SEM you can also have mediator variables, meaning you can look at indirect effects where, let's say, a variable X affects 
uh, a mediator variable m and then that mediator variable m affects an outcome variable or there are maybe multiple mediator variables there are maybe multiple outcome variables and so you can specify quite complex path models where you can look at multiple independent multiple dependent and multiple mediator variables at the same time and you can model complex pathways between different variables which is um, not possible with multiple regression analysis. Furthermore, the structural equation modeling framework also allows you to test your model so you can get tests of model fit at least for over identified models, meaning non saturated models, whereas multiple regression models by default, so to say, are intrinsically always saturated. So there are no constraints in multiple regression models. They will use the entire information in your data and don't reduce it. And so a model, a regression model then cannot be tested against the data other than you can look at R squared and you can of course look at tests of significance for the regression coefficients. You can see whether the size and magnitude of the coefficients is in line with your theory. So you can do all that, of course, for testing a model. But in SEM, you can also test the global model fit to see if the hypothesized paths and the hypothesized restrictions in your model hold up against the observed data. And that's a huge advantage that it can be used as a confirmatory approach. You can reject models um, if they are incorrect based on model fit statistics. So that's also something that you can do with SEM that you cannot do with standard regression analysis. Now, are there, are there any advantages of using regression then or is it always better to use SEM? This is a question that I also frequently get and of course it makes a lot of sense because people want to use the simplest possible statistical analysis that gives them the answers that they are looking for and I support that. I'm all for simplicity and regression analysis clearly is a simpler model, a simpler method and so I would say if you have a single outcome variable and a set of predictor variables and they are very reliably measured, meaning you have reliabilities above 0.9 or something like that, then it may not make a huge difference. And then trying to figure out how you can have multiple indicators for your predictors and your outcome variable maybe that can be unnecessarily complicated. If you have very reliable measured, you have a single outcome variable and a set of predictors, then you are probably fine simply using regression. Also in some situations, maybe you simply do not have multiple indicators. So maybe you have only one indicator for each of your constructs or attributes that you are including in a regression analysis. And then maybe you simply cannot specify a measurement model for your um, uh, for running an SEM. So in that case, you could use regression analysis or maybe path analysis with observed variables if you have multiple dependent variables and or mediator variables in your model. And then also one reason to use um, regression um, could be if your sample size is not very large. So with SEM, we typically on average need larger sample sizes to properly estimate the parameters and standard errors and fit statistics than we do with multiple regression. So with multiple regression, you can get away with smaller sample sizes on average than with SEM. And so that might be another reason for you to prefer a multiple regression model under certain circumstances when you simply cannot get uh, a larger sample that would be large enough for an SEM. How can you determine whether your sample size is large enough? So one way to do this is by a Monte Carlo simulation study that allows you to simulate a, a structural equation model with all the parameters that you expect. And then that is a good way to figure out whether the sample size is large enough. I offer some videos on this channel here as well on Monte Carlo simulation study and sample size determination. Also via Quantfish in the description, you can find a free sample size planning workshop that is based on simulation techniques. So that would be a good way to find out whether your sample size is large enough or, or whether you should stick to a multiple regression analysis 
um, as opposed to structural equation modeling. So that's about what I can think of in terms of the pros and cons of using multiple regression analysis versus structural equation modeling. So in summary, if your sample size is large enough, if you have multiple indicators for the constructs of interest and if your measures are not extremely highly reliable, then I would recommend using SEM. Also, when you have multiple dependent variables, multiple mediator variables, then um, it is more feasible, more practical to use SEM as opposed to running multiple regression analyses. And so therefore, in the planning phase of your study, you should already ask yourself, do I have multiple indicators? Will I get a large enough sample? How reliable are my measures? So will I have multiple dependent variables and or mediator variables? So all these things should be considered in the planning phase of a study so they, that you can make sure um, that you will have a large enough sample, for example, for running an SEM model and that that will be feasible. I hope you found this video useful and if you did then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional free resources and also other workshops that I offer through Quantfish and I'll see you next time.